And Miss Sherry here is going to help me, okay? Here we go. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Next verse says, wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. And this is Joshua. My name is Nathan. My name is Jaden. My name is Elizabeth. My name is Gabriel. And what are we doing? And we are going to sing Father Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons, and the sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, Father Abraham. And many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, Father Abraham. Many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham, and many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. My name is Aaron. I am here today to teach your Sunday school lesson and I'm going to be talking about the subject of complaining. Complaining is something that a lot of people deal with and a lot of people struggle with and we're going to talk today about how we can deal with that ourselves and make it not a problem anymore. And I'll give you an example of someone from the Bible who is a complainer, actually a lot of someone's called the children of Israel. Now, 
God saved the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt from the wicked Pharaoh. You all know this story. They used to be slaves. They were beaten every day, worked all day in the hot sun and had no money or good food or clothes or anything like that in Egypt. And God sent Moses to take them out of Egypt. He parted the Red Sea. He gave them food, water, a place to sleep. And instead of being happy and thankful, do you know what they said? In Numbers 11:5, they said, we remember the fish, which we we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. God saved them from their slavery and he made manna miraculously rain from the sky. And manna is bread from heaven, bread that's the best thing you could ever imagine. And he made water flow from a rock so that they could be happy and free. But they chose to be sour and to complain believing that their slavery was better than God's goodness. And we're going to talk today about how this attitude that they have is one that we often can have, and it's not the best attitude at all. So let's go ahead, turn in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3. If you've got one today, it's in the New Testament towards the back. And we're going to be reading verses 13 through 15. And it says here, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. We're going to go over that today. We're going to be talking about um, what those verses mean and explaining how they can help us with our problem of complaining. Now, what do these verses have to do with complaining? What is complaining? The Bible tells us. If you look in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14, it says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. We are commanded not to complain. When we complain, we are doing just what this verse says. We are murmuring and disputing. Now, what does it mean to murmur and what does it mean to dispute? The definition of murmur is to whisper or talk about someone or something in a bad way. And to dispute means to fight or to argue. And the Bible tells us never to do these two things. In Colossians 3.13, our text here, the first verse that we read, verse number 13 says, forbearing one another, which means taking on someone else's burden, helping Helping someone and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, which means if they have a problem with someone, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye. So that means that if you have a problem with somebody, think about how Jesus forgave us. And we need to forgive other people in the exact same way. We're told here to forgive and love people that upset us in the same way that Jesus does, because he loves us and we should love them. If you have an issue with your parents, or a brother, or a sister, or a friend, instead of being angry and talking bad about that person or that thing that you didn't like, choose to forgive them. Forgiveness makes everyone feel better. Everyone that's in the situation, if we all forgive, it'll make everybody feel better. You can both be happy and have a good day together if you choose to forgive and let go of the problems rather than being angry and complaining about them. So num point number two, love will make us unable to complain. In Colossians 3, 14, the next verse in our text, it said, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Now, charity means love. If we want to stop complaining, then we have to love whoever or whatever we are complaining about. Love is the bond of perfectness, which means that loving people will make us do what is right toward them. If we do, then we will never do anything wrong to them. So if we love the way that Christ loves us, then we will do everything that he wants us to do, including not murmuring or disputing, not complaining and not fighting. Lots of love equals little complaining. I want you to remember that statement for the rest of the message. Lots of love equals little complaining. Now, point number three, complaining hurts. In Colossians 3, 15, back to our text here, it says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. That means let the peace of God rule in your heart. Allow God's peace to be in control of your heart and decide what you're going to do throughout the day. Also, which 
also to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful that means be thankful for everything you can't have peace or be thankful if you're complaining if you're riding in the car with a crying baby the whole time does it make everyone in the car happy and peaceful no and neither is anyone happy when someone around them is complaining we're told here by god to choose to be happy and thankful for everything every day being thankful and happy is a choice just like being a complainer and the only way you can make the decision uh, about which you will be is if you apply these things that we're talking about today. God gives us everything. He gave us parents who love us, friends who we can have fun with, brothers, sisters, food, happiness, and even the air that we breathe. Sometimes things may seem unfair or make us upset, but we have to remember that Jesus really does love us, and we choose whether we are going to continue to complain like the Israelites, even when we have everything that we could ever need, or whether we're going to be thankful for the things that we do have. So just remember these Israelites. God gave them everything that they could ever want. He took them out of Israel, took them out of slavery. He gave them food and water and shelter and a person to lead them, but they still complained. We don't want to be that way. And we don't want to look at, we don't want people to look at us in the same way we look back at the children of Israel and see them as complainers. We want to be happy. Remember, lots of love equals little complaining. I want you all to go out the rest of this week until you come back to another Sunday school message, remembering that lots of love equals little complaining. Jesus coming, don't you see in yonder cloud? With 
with ten thousand angels round him. See how they my Jesus crown. I am bound for the kingdom. Will you go to glory with me? Alleluia. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Don't you see his arms extended? Don't you hear his charming voice? Each loving heart beats high for glory. Oh, my Jesus is my choice. I am bound for the kingdom. Will you go to glory with me? Alleluia. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Don't you see the saints ascending? Hear them shouting through the air. Jesus smiling, trumpet sounding, now his glory they will share. I am bound for the kingdom, will you go to glory with me? Alleluia, oh praise ye the Lord.